I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on velocity for the DAP. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the author of the DAP Destroyer book and the creator of the Orgoman products. I'm here with Professor Blois today and we're going to go over a problem involving velocity, distance, and time. And I think you're going to be totally electrified on this problem because it's a challenging one and you're going to love it. All right, Professor, I'll leave it to you. Thanks, uh, Professor Blois here. Uh, we're going to do, uh, the first problem is a catch-up problem. The second problem is a catch-up and passing problem. So let's read the first problem together. A cat is suddenly chased by a dog that is 120 feet away. Assuming they start running continuously along a straight line, and if the cat runs at a velocity of 4 feet a second, and the dog runs at a velocity of 10 feet a second, how long will it take the dog to catch up with the cat? Well, what we're interested in is how long it will take the dog to close in on that 120 feet. The dog's velocity, okay, the velocity of the, of the dog is equal to what? Uh, uh, 10 feet a second, and the velocity of the cat is four feet per second, and, but the velocity at which the distance of 120 is being narrowed is gonna be the difference between those two velocities because we want the dog's velocity relative to the cat. So that's going to be six feet per second. So we want, we're looking for time. How long will it take? So we're gonna revert back to that basic formula that's always used in distance, velocity, time formula of problems. Distance equals velocity times time, or this algebraic rearrangement, which will become very useful, time equals distance over velocity. And that's what we're gonna be using here. Time equals distance over velocity. The distance in question is 120 feet. The velocity at which that distance is closing in is this six feet per second, and therefore six divided into 120 is 20 seconds. So that's how long it will take the dog to catch up with the cat, 20 seconds. Okay, now let's move on to this second problem, a catch up and passing problem. Let's read the problem together. Train A is 305 feet long and travels at 100 miles an hour. It is traveling on a parallel track far behind train B, which is 575 feet long and is traveling at 70 miles an hour. How long will it take train A to pass train B? And we're given the, the we're dealing with two different uh, measures here, feet and miles. We're given the equivalence, 60 miles an hour is 88 feet per second. Okay, that's good to know. I just, before we do this problem, I'd just like to say a few words about what it means for one train to pass another, what's involved. So here we have train A and train B traveling along the same track. Train A is coming up from behind. Okay, and the moment the front of train A meets the back of train B, that will begin the passing process. Now I want you to pay attention to the back of train B. How far does train A have to travel so that the back of train A and the back of train B are totally lined up? Well, it's equal to the distance, it's equal to the length of train A. Okay, now pay attention to the back of train A. How far, how much distance does train A have to travel additionally such that it passes train B. That is to say, when the back of train B is flush with the front, the, the back of train A is flush with the front of train B. It has to travel a distance equaling the length of train B. So what do we get from this visual demonstration? In order for train A to pass train B, it has to travel a distance equal to the sum of the lengths of the two trains. Okay, so now let's proceed to do this problem, knowing that. So we know that train A, uh, uh, the distance train A uh, plus the train B, okay, train A plus train B is equal to 305 feet plus 575 feet, which is then equal to 880 feet. Okay, so that's how far train A has to travel in order to completely pass train B. What is the velocity? Well, again, we're looking for relative velocity. Just, just like in the cat and dog problem, the, we're looking for the relative velocity between A and B, which is gonna be the difference in their velocities. So that means that the, the rate at which the distance between the two trains is closing in. So, 
it's going to be the velocity of train A minus the velocity of train B. So let's see, train A is traveling at 100 miles an hour, and train B is traveling at a rate of 70 miles an hour, 70 mph, <clears throat> and that gives us a difference of 30 miles per hour. That's the rate at which train A is catching up to train B. Well, let's make this conversion right now. We've got 30 miles an hour. We know that 60 miles an hour is 88 feet a second. Let's just half that. 30 miles an hour is then 44 feet per second. Okay, so basically the problem is how long will it take train A, traveling at a relative velocity of 44 feet per second, to go travel the distance equal to the sum of the two train lengths, 80, 880 feet a second, and we're going to use time equals distance over velocity, as we did in the previous problem. The distance is the sum of the lengths of the two trains, 880 feet, and the velocity is that 44 feet per second, 44 FPS, and 44 goes into 88 twice, so therefore we get the solution 20 seconds. It will take 20 seconds for train A to completely pass train B. Very nice work. I loved it. Hopefully you guys caught all that, um, go over it, and then you'll be ready to hit the Mad Destroyer with a fury. All right, we'll see you guys again for another math clip with Professor Blois and myself. Okay, good day to you. Bye-bye.